why the condo market is heating up again makes no sense. But I'm gonna explain it to you in this week's episode of Prime Props TV. I promise you, it'll be worth it. Good day, Toronto. Happy New Year. We survived 2020 and hopefully it gets better from here. I mean, 2020 was a pretty low bar to start with. Anyways, welcome to another episode of Prime Props TV. So glad you could join me here today. Every week on Prime Props TV, we take a closer look at the Toronto real estate topics that matter the most to you. And on this episode, I'm going to explain to you why and how the condo market is getting hot again for God knows why, I have no idea, right? It just makes no sense. So if you like explaining videos like this, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe to the Prime Props TO channel for more awesome real estate content just like this. The button to subscribe is on the bottom right hand side of the screen right here. Now, everything I'm about to explain to you is regarding the downtown condo market, more specifically the areas we call C01 and C08. So if you're not a giant real estate nerd like me or basically a realtor, I'm gonna put the map of it for you right here where C01 and C08 is. It's basically the downtown area flanked by the lake on the south, DVP on the, I guess, east on the screen? Yeah, something like that. And then the north side is Bloor and then Dufferin on this side. So to illustrate the condo market and why it's getting hot again, let me give you the numbers for November 2020. These are the latest numbers we have from Treb at the time of recording this video. And at the end of 2020, the numbers, I'm sorry, the numbers for end of 2020 have not come yet. So at November 2020, the month of inventory is 4.775. Let's just call it 4.8 at the end of November, which is a very balanced market. Remember, four to six, balance, anything under, sellers, anything over, buyers. Now, we had about 500 sales, which is practically the identical to the same time previous previous year in 2019 during a hot year. And in 2020, we had 499 sales. Now, the only difference in November between 2019 and 2020 was that we had more inventory in 2020 and prices were trending downwards year over year and month over month. Then something clicked. I only have anecdotal evidence about this, but at the same time, the first vaccine was announced for COVID, we saw, well, like our team saw an uptick in calls regarding condos. Then it increased again when the second vaccine was announced. Now, I felt the amount of like COVID cases in Ontario around that time was like 1,500, give or take. I wasn't recall, but seriously, somebody make a graph regarding the number of COVID cases to the amount of like real estate Google searches in Toronto. I bet it'd be interesting. Anyways, the whole point of why I'm explaining to you this is when I, what I saw in December, I was telling all my clients and on my newsletter. So if you're not on that, that's the quickest way to get uh, updates for on the market from me. You can subscribe to the newsletter. It's in the description below. But I was telling a lot of people the condo activity was increasing significantly. Every single week in December got a little bit hotter, a little bit hotter, a little bit hotter, and it made, just made no sense, right? So wrapping up December in my tally of the numbers from what I can tell, December had 571 sales. Yes, 571. This is not like a mis like miscounting. Like we're up 90% from 2019 to 2020. It's nuts. It makes no sense. We're up 15% from November 2020 to December 2020. So I was like, what the heck? Normally December is like less sales than November because you know, holidays and stuff, but nope, not in 2020. However, for those of you who think you already kind of like have FOMO, oh snap, I missed out. Don't worry, the average price actually came down $2,000 from November 2022, December 20. But in a few days when Trev numbers are out, um, we're gonna be hearing year over year numbers, which means that like we'll be down 11% from the downtown from like December 2019. So this is what I was talking about in my condo recap. So if you missed it, check it out. There's a lot up here. This is not to say that the activity increasing 200% is causing prices to go up because like I always say, inventory is the biggest driving uh, factor for prices. And despite the 200% increase in activity, we had a lot of inventory to be absorbed. This leads me to my next point, right? The months of inventory in December for condos was about 3.4, we'll call it 3.5, which is still moderately high for Toronto condo market standards in the last 10 years but a seller's market nonetheless. So to give you an idea of how much inventory was absorbed, in November, like I was saying earlier in the video, the months of inventory was about 4.775, almost five. That's a 28% swing from we had at 3.5. It's really big, right? So we basically went from every five condos uh, that were listed, one would sell, to every three and a half condos, one would sell. So you let me know in the comment section below, uh, did you think the condo market would bounce back this fast, specifically during the holidays? I most definitely did not, and I'm fairly bullish on the market. So while we may have the prices staying about the same, right, the months of inventory dropping down is a leading indicator of where things are headed, right? Now, I personally have not noticed many listings coming out on the market in the last three weeks in December. So let's see what this month in January brings and has in store for us. The last metric I want to share with you is the days on market. This is not like the 
best metric to use and there are many terminations for like listings and then they relist it because you know that's a strategy that we do guilty of it too however to illustrate a point i want to share this with you in november 2020 the days on market for stuff that was sold is about 24 call it three and a bit of weeks right so it's a little bit high again for toronto standards because it's usually two weeks 14 days pre-pandemic but in december we're at 36 weird right weird you would imagine the days on market would be decreasing because activity is increasing right so if you think of it that way, it doesn't make sense, but that's actually not what's happening because many of the listings that are uh, coming on the market have already been around for a long time. So that the buyer demand that they're starting to experience right now that's absorbing inventory, they're absorbing inventory from October and November, meaning those who didn't relist, the days on market was a little bit longer, right? So they, those properties eventually got sold. Now, the other interesting thing is like the percentage sold, right? Like how much it was sold for um, like what they're asking for. So the listing percentage or sold, sorry, sold percentage was around 97% right now. So the idea of finding that deal, quote unquote, I was talking about, you know, back in April and September, when we saw like a huge increase in inventory, like spiked up, it's kind of over now, I think. Pretty sure. Multiple offers are kind of rearing their heads, although it's only for like very, very spectacular. I saw like maybe two or three, but I made a public service announcement last week on the newsletter for anyone who was looking into condos, whether for personal use or investment. The window for buying something before the market picks up is closing very soon. It's closing very soon. I don't think we're gonna be where it's pre-pandemic where it's crazy, but it won't be like this for the next two uh, months because the prices will be compared will be peak 2020 and peak uh, March and February, prices to where in 2021, it's gonna look low. But when we compare it to April, 2020, it's gonna look good because we had a huge drop off, right? And that's kind of when spring starts. So if you've been waiting for that bottom, we very much likely kind of saw in the river mirror and we're trending up right now. So I was always saying, once you see the signs of life, you have a finite amount of window before prices go up. This is me telling you right now, the condo market downtown is showing signs of life. Prices haven't gone up yet, but it's showing signs of life. So if you're looking to make a move into the condo space, you can book a call with me using the link here. It's www.chatwithzen.com. But before I sign off, I do have one piece of nugget I want to leave you and I'll elaborate a little bit more uh, later this month is that at the end of this uh, 2020, my professional opinion, and let me paint the picture for you. Since the pandemic, I've seen prices for freehold properties anywhere in the 905 and 406 go up like 15 to 30%. That's a nine month span since the pandemic. In Durham, we've seen prices go up 30% in six months. In Guelph and Hamilton, we've seen prices go up 20% roughly. Whereas uh, pre and post pandemic, the condo prices have dropped 10 to 15% from the peak, right? We're gonna call it February, 2020. This means essentially there's like almost a 20, uh, sorry, 45% swing in prices between condos and freeholds. So the gap pre-pandemic was the smallest it's ever been between, let's call it, you know, the 416 average condo and the average detached 905 home. I'd say that'd be somewhere between three to 350,000, depending on the area, right? But let's just call it that. Now, post-pandemic, I would say the price gap is bigger than what it was because of that swing, right? It's not as like crazy as 2017 swing, where it's like five, six hundred thousand dollars but I'd peg it somewhere between four to $500,000 right now. The detached prices are not slowing down anytime soon. There's just no supply. The condos are trending up, but faster than the detaches? Absolutely not. Plus, I think we're about to have a gang busted year for 2021 in the amount of transactions we're gonna have. On top of that, the government policy set up the condos for a bounce back because a lot of people will be priced out of the freehold market with the first time home buyers. They just raised Toronto's uh, juiced up plan to about like 725,000, meaning that they're gonna help you with that kind of purchase with like uh, contributing to your down payment. Meaning first time home buyers are primed to buy condos again. Now, I'm not saying that prices are gonna go up increasing like crazy in the last five years with like you know, 10, 12, 30% year over year increase, but I do think the floor for like where the price for the condos are, we hit them. Now, for those who are priced out of the freehold market, they're gonna be going back to the condo space with first time home buyers being there as well. The real question is how quickly are the prices going to accelerate? Even the way I monitor the market, I did not see what was happening in December happen because I'm pretty bullish and I was like, what, what is going on, right? So I'm telling you all of this because the question I'm pondering right now is how quickly are we going to escalate in prices? Because if you've always wanted a condo essentially to live in, the time is now. I'm 99% sure you have a window of opportunity, you call it two to three months. For investors, same thing. If you want to add this to your portfolio, if it works, then you can do it. The time is right now. However, if you wait a little bit longer, the competition may start increasing and increasing. So if that's you and you fit into that category, I would make sure you uh, set up a call. I'll put the link here again for you. Until next time, your move, your future. Now that you're done watching this one, how about this one? Oh, you know what? This one's good too. Ooh, 
This one's really good. You know what? Just watch the most.